All right, so Jackson's gonna be our videographer today. And I'm gonna work with his dad here, Anderson, <clears throat> just for a minute. Hey, buddy. All right, we're gonna get after this. So we're gonna talk about, we're, we're putting a inverter system. I don't see a lot of videos on this, so it's very important. I, you know, I think we should educate people on videos. So in the back of the truck, you can't see it. I've got a 2000 watt inverter. And so the reason why I'm doing that is because I wanna be able to charge up stuff on AC power. I wanna be able to run power equipment out in the field, like a circular saw, skill saw out in the field with AC power, not just DC power. But I wanna be able to use my engine right here as a generator. Now, this engine using an alternator here produced 12 volts of electricity, excuse me, it actually is put, producing 14 volts with a voltage regulator, and then that charges the 12 volt system of the battery. So the battery is 12 volts, 12 volt battery, and we gotta be able to produce more energy than we're actually, uh, than we actually need in order for this to be charged and then run all the other electrical stuff that we need in the vehicle. So um, while the vehicle's running, this engine's acting just like a generator would in, in your house or what you're seeing if you have a power outage. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a two battery system here. So this is the main cranking power battery right here. So this battery is producing this energy to then go you know, run everything on the engine, including the spark plugs. But then we're gonna jump off of here, run this line, as you see the red line here, all the way back here, and we're gonna put a battery in here. Now this is gonna be a deep cycle battery, gets a little bit better energy, better production, uh, not just a cranking battery. So what we're gonna do, once we get to this point, we're gonna take, where is that little beautiful thing right here? It's called a smart battery isolator. Now, why would we wanna use this? Well, the key here is, and, and we use this in the RVs and boats and all these different industries so that we can keep one thing from happening. When we need to crank a battery, we wanna make sure that battery has the energy to crank if we're dispelling energy through the inverter because we're taking energy away. We don't want that to happen to the main cranking. The reason is, is because if I have the engine off and I've just discharged all the energy from both batteries, I'm gonna be dead in the field, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna isolate that battery by putting this little bad boy right in the middle, okay? Now, let's say what it does is it, if this one's discharging, it will not allow it to discharge from this battery. Now, I can use a switch in, in RVs. We actually have a switch and that's what these two lines are for. You can put a little kick, kick over switch and allow the energy to flow from this battery if it's charged back to the main cranking battery if the main cranking battery is dead. So that's that's a dead kill switch is what that does. And it gives you that energy to go back, which is really, really neat. Now, so the other thing that we've done here, if we, we've run these large cables. And the reason is, is because that inverter takes a lot of energy, okay, to, to go from the front to the back. So we're pr producing a lot of voltage from the front to the back. So we have both a ground and a positive wire that we've already run to that inverter in the back. And we're gonna ground that. Then we're gonna have our two, our main battery here. We're gonna put a charge line right here. And then we're also gonna put a ground line from the secondary battery once we're done with that. Now, the reason why we're doing that is because we gotta close the circuit. One of the things you may not notice is that we're actually gonna do what's called a parallel circuit. What that means is, is that we got a 12 volt battery to a 12 volt battery. We want it to stay in a 12 volt system. To do that, we go from a positive to a positive, a negative to a negative. So you're hooking up the positive terminal to a positive terminal, a negative terminal to a negative terminal, okay? Now, you may see stuff like uh, a battery that works on, operates on a uh, piece of power equipment and it says 18 volts or it says 24 volts. Well, what does that mean? That means that the battery's actually been put in series. So that means your positive goes to the negative, then a positive to a negative, positive to a negative. What that does is each one of those ramps up voltage. So if I were to put that in here, in this system, and I went from the positive to the negative on this battery, and then the positive to the negative on that battery, what that does is that makes this a 24 volt system. We don't want a 24 volt system because it would overload. It's too much voltage, too much energy going there. So we want it to be a, a, a 12 volt system, so we're hooking it up in parallel. So that's kind of a simple explanation of what that does. Now. Here's a very good way to understand electricity. Electricity flows from a positive to a negative. It's exactly like a river. A river flows from the mountain to the ocean. So it goes from a high place to a low place. Well, electricity is the same way. And it has the current, and that's the reason why we call it electrical current, because it flows. So that's a very good way to, to kind of see the unseen in this. Now, you can have a backflow of current, and that's something that this isolator helps with. 
So we put what's called diodes in there and it keeps the energy from going backwards. So very important you understand how that system works so that you don't get stuck out in the field with two dead batteries. So now, but here's the cool part. When I'm going down the road, what's gonna happen is, this is now, the alternator is charging this battery and then that battery is gonna charge this battery while we're going down the road. And so I can have that inverter running and charging other equipment while I'm going down the road. So I'm getting the maximum amount of use out of my engine being a generator while I'm going somewhere. How cool is that? So that being said, we're gonna finish this project up, man. I'll we'll get you some pictures on the final end of this and uh, we'll let you know how it works out. Y'all have a great day. Again, James Silver, y'all check it out.